Let's start with some basic notions in corpus linguistics. Now, a corpus is a collection of authentic texts to be used as a sample of the language or language variety. Sample is actually a term from statistics. There's also a verb called sampling. Um, and normally we use samples to draw conclusions about the entire population. What is a good sample? Um, a good sample in the context of corpora uh, is supposed to be representative, balanced and, well, big enough. We'll get back to these notions in a second, but if you're new to corpora, um, I warmly recommend some further reading. There is a gentle introduction um, that you have a, a link here, um, which explains some basic terms uh, in corpus linguistics. And th there's also a short video by Gary Mottram, um, about 10 minutes, which also will uh, guide you through um, some main concepts in corpus linguistics. Um, Let's uh, let's do a quick review of types of corpora. So we can categorize corpora based either on their scope. So we speak about general language or reference corpora as opposed to um, a specialized corpora. Then we may categorize them on the basis of the medium of communication. So they can either be composed of written text or spoken text or computer-mediated texts, uh, which usually represent a separate category because they are considered to be some sort of a mixture between um, written and spoken discourse. Then, um, in terms of language, we can speak of monolingual and multilingual corpora. In terms of the translation status, so for multilingual corpora only, uh, we distinguish between uh, so-called comparable corpora, which contain usually texts in two or more languages originally produced uh, in those languages, but um, the Subcorpora in each language are comparable um, in some uh, some way or another, whereas in parallel corpora uh, we have uh, translations, so one or more translations of the same text, which also means that parallel corpora can be aligned. Um, in terms of time or the time frame. Um, we divide corpora between um, into uh, synchronic, uh, so containing um, text from a short period of time or contemporary text, and a diachronic, which are uh, built um, in order to observe language change. Uh, the next distinction is between uh, native and learner corpora, so language produced by native speakers or by learners of a language. And then uh, in terms of the annotation uh, status, uh, corpora can contain either raw texts or annotated texts. Now, for specialized corpora, which are our main topic here, uh, they can belong basically to any of the categories below. So they can contain written texts or quite often we also include um, internet texts uh, or we might even uh, decide and include transcripts of um, spoken conversations. They can be monolingual or multilingual and if multilingual they may contain uh, comparable portions or parallel texts, or even both. Uh, so quite often we build specialized corpora, which are a mixture of um, comparable and parallel texts. Normally, a specialized corpus would be synchronic, um, and normally it would contain texts produced by native speakers, although uh, this, again, is not um, completely necessary. And then, uh, depending on what uh, we have available, we may build corpora out of uh, raw text or we may have them uh, annotated in some way or another. Um, now let's get back to the idea of uh, representativeness. This is quite a central notion in corpus design, or in other words, your results will only ever be as good as your corpus, right? 
Um, here we have two definitions of representativeness. The first is by Leach saying that a corpus is thought to be representative of the language variety it is supposed to represent if the findings based on its contents can be generalized um, to the said language variety. So uh, emphasis on uh, generalization. And the second definition reads representativeness refers to the extent to which a sample, so we have sample again, uh, includes the full range of vari variability in a population. But if we're trying to represent language, what is the population? Um, the population could be people, it could be the speakers of, of the language, but in empirical linguistic research we usually consider the text as the unit of collection. So if we were building a general language corpus, the population would very likely consist of all written and spoken texts produced in that language. For a specialized corpus, on the other hand, um, our population would probably consist of all texts uh, pertaining to a certain domain. So this might include books or journal papers, articles, doctoral master's thesis, textbooks, um, but also specialized websites, forums, uh, even transcripts of uh, spoken, spoken language uh, and so on. There are two ways of achieving representativeness in corpora. Um, one way uh, generally holds for general corpora, where we speak of balance, uh, and balance uh, is the feature which um, measures the range of genres included in a corpus and their proportion. Uh, and uh, sampling uh, refers to how the text chunks or entire text for each genre are selected. Perhaps more importantly for us, um, for a specialized corpora, uh, we uh, sometimes uh, measure or express a representativeness uh, with the, the degree of closure of saturation and what is meant actually as a lexical uh, saturation. So <clears throat> normally this would mean that um, uh, the feature appears to be finite or is subject to a very v limited variation beyond a certain point. And to put this in more simple terms, um, the curve of lexical growth is flattening out as we are adding texts to the corpus. This is also referred to as Heap's Law and um, uh, we can look at it here. So this basically means that uh, as we are building the corpus, uh, in the beginning, the curve is very steep, right? Uh, if we have a small amount of documents, the number of unique words will be very high and will also rise with each addition, with, e with each added document. But um, until a certain, uh, a certain point, uh, the curve will start, start flattening out. So uh, any document that we add uh, will not bring as much new vocabulary uh, as uh, while the corpus is small. Um, so perhaps what we want to achieve when building specialized corpora um, is to be somewhere along um, uh, this, uh, this point where the curve has already strengthened out.